What's going on, everyone? So all we've heard all offseason is that Max Christie is supposed to play a big role for the Lakers, and he's supposed to play a lot was the word that was used, or the words that were used. So Max Christie is expected to, to actually be a huge and significant part of the rotation. Now, obviously, it depends on how many minutes does he really get. Like, what's a lot? Is a lot 15 minutes, or is a lot like 30, 35 minutes? Right? Also, what type of role is he supposed to play? Right, He's expected to play a big role, but what is that? Is it just primarily on the defensive side as being that point of attack, being that 3 and D guy, or are you going to let him kind of give him the green light? Maybe kind of let him emerge into like a six-man type guy. Give him that opportunity to go out and get 15 a night and, and play some defense and, and create a little for himself and others, which he's shown the ability to do, um, but in very limited sample sizes, right? We don't have this huge catalog of Max Christie, right? He could be great. You know, he could be, you know, just prime time or he could end up being average or below average, right? He could be a big disappointment. We don't really know. The only things that we do know is that he was 40% on catch and shoot threes and he did that two straight years. So that's very likely who he is. And he may arguably be our second best on ball defender behind uh, Jared Vanderbilt, right? Anthony Davis is our best overall defender. Jared Vanderbilt is our best on ball perimeter defender. There is definitely an argument for Max Christie with his size and versatility um, and his ability to defend bigger. You've seen that. And even things like guarding Damian Lillard, he did an excellent job on. Uh, defending uh, Devin Booker, he did an excellent job on. Right? Again, there's an argument. You could definitely make an argument for uh, Cam Reddish. And I also think Cam Reddish is more versatile defensively because of his size and his length. You know, 6'8", 7, he has a 7'2", 7'1", wingspan. Um, so that definitely could be something. But Max Christie also is a better shooter um, and can dual create a little bit more on the offense side for himself. But again, really comes down and boils down to what opportunity minutes and role does he get? Big difference when you're getting, you know, three attempts per game, like he has been, or you get 12 attempts per game, right? And the type of efficiency and all and whatnot. But um, I did a video diving into Dalton Connect and kind of the projections in what, you know, we think comparison wise, uh, Dalton Connect could be, for this upcoming season, because Dalton Connect and Max Christie are kind of the two anomalies, right? They're the two guys that are expected to play a big part this season. Um, Lakers are supposed to kind of lean heavily into the young guys, uh, but they're both kind of uh, unproven. Both are kind of this mystery. So just like we did in the Dalton Connect video, which if you didn't see that one, go check that one out after this one, of course. Um, let's kind of go over some maybe best case scenarios. Obviously, again, Never want to put a cap on these guys because you never know, right? He'd come out and just be absolute money, right? Could be disappointment. But we, I'll give kind of like the best case scenario, uh, almost a little unrealistic, and then we'll give some more realistics and then um, kind of hopeful, right? So let's get right into it. Now, I think more likely than not, he's going to be a... Danny Green, KCP-esque type player. Again, I'm not saying that he's going to be a Danny Green, KCP. Now, long term, you know, like three years from now, something like that, could he be a legit Danny Green, KCP type player? Like all defensive, two guard that's just plays his role, on ball defense, right? Maybe makes an all defensive team and can knock down the open three. Sure, right? Long term. This season, I'm not saying he'll be that. I mean, KCP and Danny Green are the two, like, prototypes as far as 3 and D guys go. I mean, for like 10 years, when you thought of a 3 and D guy, it was Danny Green. I mean, it was called the Danny Green role for years, right? And KCP kind of evolved into that. Now, maybe he could be like a KCP in Detroit, right? Because you got to remember, the KCP we know of today wasn't that in Detroit and wasn't that the first year with the Lakers. He kind of became an immersion into that like premier three and D two guard uh, with the Lakers, right? Max Christie, I could see kind of being a, you know, KCP Danny Green light, right? So not elite defensively, not all defensive this season, but a guy that can be plug in at the two, knock down the open three, again, 40% catch and shoot threes. Uh, and then also be a guy that 
uh, can defend basically your point guard or two spot, uh, even on occasion defend the threes and defend up kind of big, right? That, to me, I think is probably realistic. Like, if you're talking about a realistic option, being just, again, not saying Danny Green and KCB, because I can already hear people like, oh, you realistically think... No, I'm saying ask. Be a, a version of that. You know, even a poor man's version of Danny Green and KCP would be huge, right? And, and he has similar size, similar length, so I do think that these are good comparisons, right? I'm talking about just being able to defend, defend well, right? Not just okay, not just good. I'm talking about, like, legitimate defense while also shooting a good percentage from three-point range. His rookie season, he shot 42% from three overall. And then, like I said, for over over 40% on catch and shoots. I think he was like 44% on catch and shoots that season. Um, so that's good. And then, but again, limited sample size. Talking 1.5 attempts. And then last season, he was 36% on 1.8 attempts. But he was 39% uh, percent on catch and shoot three. So again, just a hair under uh, 40%. He was like 36 So again, esque type. I want to make that clear, esque type, not saying that he will be, you know, prime KCP, you know, Lakers championship, Denver championship, or even last year KCP was all defensive, and like, you know, Spurs or Lakers championship Danny Green, well, I mean, Lakers championship Danny Green wasn't Spurs Danny Green, or Toronto Danny Green, but he wasn't far off, that far off, right, so that type, but another option, and I think like top of the top, like, cream of the crop type, um, best case scenario, could he be like a Chris Middleton, Andrew Wiggins type? Now, again, not saying that, you know, he'll be exactly like that. And these guys have a little more size on him, right? Like Andrew Wiggins is like, what, six, seven. Um, same thing with, um, a, a Chris Middleton, right? Chris Middleton is, I believe what, six, seven as well. Um, so you're talking about two guys that what I what I mean in comparison is their ability to do more than just be three and D. Right? When you think of Danny Green, you think of KCP, they're pretty much just solely three and D. Couldn't they occasionally put the ball on the deck and make a play or knock down the mid-range? You know, kind of give you the little pump fake, take a step or two in, and then pull up? Yes. But you think of like Andrew Wiggins and and uh uh Chris Middleton. Right, these are two guys that can take guys off the dribble, that can create for themselves, create a little bit for others. Right, they they're not as like KCP and Danny Green in the prime were like again all defensive, lockdown guys. Right, Andrew Wiggins and Chris Middleton are good defenders when they're locked in and engaged. They haven't been so great these last like year two years. Uh, neither of them really have since like really the championship year. But it's more so of like their skill set. Right, their ability to yes, they can play that three and D role out on the wing, but they can also just go get a bucket on occasion. They're not really the best player on your team. They're not really the second best player on the team. You know, on, you could argue even not even the third best player on the team. Although Andrew Wiggins in that Warriors run where they ended up uh, winning the championship in 2022, Andrew Wiggins was arguably, uh, or he was the second best, but he was arguably should have been co MVP in that. But I'm talking more you know, general Andrew Wiggins. Like, he just kind of had this, like, stretch where he was ridiculous, right? Talking more like his norm, right? Like, these are two guys that aren't super crazy, right? Like, Chris Middleton's basically a 15, 5, and 5 guy. Not saying Max Christie will necessarily be that, but can Max Christie be, a, you know, a 12, 3, and 3 guy? 12, 4, and 4 guy, right? While shooting a good percentage. All right, you look you look at Chris Middleton. Again, this isn't he's not like this premier 30 point a game guy. I mean, he's had seasons where he's averaged 20, but I'm talking more just like his normal seasons, right? Like even last season, he averaged 27 minutes per game, gave you 15 points, five assists, five rebounds, um, shot uh 56% from two-point range and 38% from three-point range. Right? Can Max Christie be 38% from three and like 50% from two and give you, you know, 12 points per game. I don't think that's crazy unrealistic. Um, you know, again, I, I'm not saying that he's going to be as good as these guys this year, but kind of play a similar role. Not just solely 3 and D, but a guy that can, on occasion, put the ball on the deck and just 
get you a play. Go get you a bucket, right? But not like, you know, I didn't want to compare the M to like, you know, a uh, uh, Devin Booker or anything like that because I that, that is a little too extreme. Where, you know, Andrew Wiggins, you know, he's a guy that, again, like, yes, he's had seasons where he'll go get you 20, 20, to a game. I'm talking more of like, you know, you look at last year, uh, Andrew Wiggins, 13 points a game, uh, four rebounds, three assists, um, you know, that kind of guy where, you know, he shot 50%, 49.8% uh, from two point range, shot 36% from three point range. So I hope, you know, Max Christie give you a little better shooting from three than that, but that type of Andrew Wiggins, not like premier give you 30 a night, 20 a night type Andrew Wiggins. Talking about, again, kind of like a, a lesser version of that, but more so there's their ability to make plays beyond just being that standard 3 and D guy. Um, but, again, a lot of expectations for Max Christie this year. Um, again, these are all just hopeful projections. Obviously, he could, again, he could end up being terrible, right? He could end up being nothing more than just like, you know, a... Uh, uh, Standard bench guy, maybe give you six to eight points a game and, and you know, limited minutes, right? Maybe he won't get the opportunity. Maybe he won't get the role. Maybe it won't really be worth it um, to, to play him in any meaningful way. But there's also the chance that he does. That he does, you know, he takes those strides, takes those steps. You know, he, he kind of starts to emerge and evolve into the, the guy that we hope and expect him to be. Um, you know, we'll see. Time will tell. But anyway... As always, this is a discussion, and I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Um, what do you kind of think he'll project as? Um, now, again, I'm not talking about the players specifically, but more so the skill set and the style of play that they have, right? KCP, Danny Green, kind of more the, the 3 and D mold at the 2 spot. Knock down the 3 with efficiency, defend uh, well, and then... You know, the Andrew Wiggins, Chris Middleton type, where they're not just 3 and D guys. They can put the ball on the floor. They can kind of make plays a little bit for others. Um, they can, you know, be three-level scorers. Uh, same thing. That's what I'm hoping uh, Max Christie can be. But, again, however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me not. So we enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one.